This is problem 6.5 on page 312. There's some general instructions for the, the problem set that this is part of. It says, using the method of joints, determine the force in each member of the truss shown. State whether each member is in tension T or compression C. So how many members do we have in this truss if it's 6.5? Well, let's see, let's sketch it. Let's look at some of the features of the sketch to understand why your author has drawn it the way he has. Let's see, we've got a member across there. One that goes up here to point C. This is point E down here. This is point F. There's a member from C to F. Of course, that's not it. Continue up to D, over back to C. And despite my drawing here, C, D, and C, F only connect at C. Up to A, over to B. Support down, a rigid bar from A to D, and then finally the loads, 12 kips. Anybody know what a kip is? Um, it's a kilo what? A kilo pound. A thousand pounds. In other words. So this is 18,000 pounds and 12,000 pounds loads. Yes. Uh, that, I think that's the diagram for 6.4. I didn't know if you were going to say that. I think 6 so. That's 6.5. 6.4 is on the left. Uh, okay, our, our books are set up differently. Sorry. Okay, well, you're fine. There's a couple of dimensions given. There's a 12 foot, you should always check me, that's a good thing. There's a 12 foot dimension here, not inches, but, and then what, two 5 foot dimensions. Now when you work in a problem like this and you're trying to find the load in all the members, I recommend drawing or making a table. For example, member AB okay, is one of the members. Member AD is another member. Let's keep them in order. Let's go with AC next and then AD. That's one, two, three members. Let's not forget BD. So that's all of these upper members. Uh, and of course, AB and BA would be the same member. Uh, CD looks like the next one. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, CE for alphabetical order's sake, then CF. Then DF, last member, EF. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine members we need to find the forces in. So the method is to consider each joint independently. We've got Joints, so these are members, and we've got what, well let's see, let me scoot over just a little bit. Let's see what joints we will have to analyze. Well, a, B, C, D, E, and F, right? These are six different free body diagrams we're going to take, six different joints. Now, of course, if I start making a free body diagram of, I don't know, say point B, there are 12 kips load applied externally. But there can also be force applied in BD. Now, here's one assumption I recommend you always make. Always assume that members are in tension. That way, if you end up with a positive result, you'll know that you were correct. If you end up with a negative result, you know that it's compression. It's easier to associate negative with compression. Okay. So if member BD is in tension, be careful here, what direction would BD pull on pin B? If BD is in tension, in what direction would it pull on B? It would pull down. It would pull down. Be careful. You always want to draw forces that act on the free body. Don't get confused between the fact that there's a tensile force in BD, or maybe there is, we're assuming that. Okay. Don't get confused between the force in the member and the force that member applies on the pin. Or the force that the pin applies on the member. This is a free body diagram of the pin. Okay. What direction should I draw the force for AB? To the left or to the right? To the left. To the left. Why? Because 12 kips is pointing to the left. No, it has nothing to do with the fact that 12 kips points to the Because it's in tension? Because we're assuming tension for A. <coughs> <coughs> Pardon. <coughs> we 
are assuming tension for AB. That's why. Okay. What if I set up a coordinate system like this? Not that I really need one. Now do you feel uncomfortable with my selections? I did not choose these directions because they would be opposite of an XY coordinate system. I chose them because I want to think of any forces in any members as being tensile forces. That the members are pulling on it. Where's the FB on there? Where at? Uh, is that a FBD? Uh, All right. Now, I'm getting ahead of myself just a little bit here with this free body diagram, but that's okay. What do you notice, in particular, about BD? Notice there's a right angle here. What do you notice about BD? It's the only force in the right. uh, vertical direction. So what does that mean it must be equal to? Zero. That's right. How do we know? Because if some forces in the vertical direction will be better get zero, or else that pin is going to accelerate, right? How do we know it's the only force in the vertical direction? You see anything else pulling on it or pushing on it? On um, BD. On B. B is the free oh, body. On B. Uh, Me either. It's so just that, and then it's A, B, right? So it's B, B, and A, B. Uh, yes, B, B, and A, B, but A, B is in a different direction. Yeah. So if I sum forces in the, the vertical direction, the only force would be negative B, D. Why did I say negative? Because it's opposite of the coordinate system. So when I sum forces, I have to respect the direction of the arrows and the direction of the coordinate system. So I know that BD is equal to zero. This, this, this is how we wrote this. This is how we wrote the BD equal to zero. What could you tell me about AB? <coughs> it has to oppose the um, 12 kips load. So if I sum forces in the horizontal direction, I get negative AB minus 12 kips equals zero, and so AB equals negative 12 kips, doesn't it? Yeah. What does that negative sign tell you? It means it's in compression. I guessed wrong, didn't I? It's yeah. not tension, it's compression. So AB has a load, let me move this up, of 12 kips. It carries a load of 12 kips in compression. That's what that C is for. Okay. Now, when I draw a free body diagram for point A, watch what happens next, because we kind of jumped into this. Let me, uh, get rid of these equations, although we will use the same equations over and over again, just applied to different free bodies. So here's free body A, and we're going to draw A, B in tension, even though it's really in compression. Why? Because that's my habit, okay? You'll just be consistent here. Everything will work out. What else is there? Well, there's also A, D, and A, C. Notice there's only one, uh, only one member whose force I already know, and that's A, B. In fact, I know it goes in the other direction. So if I were to sum forces, say, in the horizontal direction, well, what else am I going to do? Some forces in the vertical direction. Why haven't I done that yet? One at a time. Take your pick. Do whichever one you want to do first. You'll need both. I'd plug in AB. But wait a second. AB is a negative thing. Trust me. This is a way to keep yourself straight. When I plug in the actual value of 12 kips, I'm going to notice this compression. I'm going to plug it in negative. I'm just making sure that when I plug it in here, it matches what's in the free body diagram. Um, I, I kind of already know the answer to this, but you're just creating a few free body diagrams for each joint. That's correct. Is that how you're just going to solve the whole problem? That's right. Except there's one little trick, and I want, to, I want it to trip us up. So I'm going through joint by joint, which is the way most students start. But there's something we missed that we should have done first. Okay, I mentioned it already, but I don't know if you... Remove all the zero force members? No, there's really no need to remove all the zero force members. You, you could. You could figure out which ones they are, but it's something else. You'll see what happens. All right, so <coughs> sorry, <guys. coughs> I guess I'll just keep that out, huh? 
So AD has a horizontal component, so plus AD, let me just call it X, I'll figure it out later, I'll figure out the geometry later, okay? And that's it. That sum had better come to zero. Okay. Now if I rearrange this just a bit, or better yet, let's get the horizontal component first. Now let's see, if you got a 5, 12, what's the other side of that triangle? 13. Five, 13, that's right, because 5 squared is 25, 12 squared is 100, or 144, add them together, it's 196, square root is 13. So each one of these are 13 foot long, yes sir? Um, so AB is positive for the X direction of, for the Be careful. In the X direction. I've is drawn AB as tensile. And then when I plugged it into the equation, I noted that that direction is a positive direction. Uh, so, okay, so it's positive because you made it positive? I always draw these arrows as tensile forces, always, okay? And then later on, when I plug in a value in the equation for AB, I'll notice that AB is a negative thing, you see? So are the AD and ADX, are those just positive because of how you drew the free body diagram, or are they They're positive, positive because I assume tensile members, number one, and those tensile force directions ended up being in positive coordinate directions. You could say, well, yeah, but this has a negative coordinate direction. Yeah, but I'm looking at the horizontal piece, not the vertical piece. When you made the free body diagram, how did you know AD was going in the positive direction? I assume tension. Always assume tension. Notice when I drew a free body diagram of B, I made it in the negative direction, right? Because my consistent behavior is to always assume tension. It's a good question. Okay. And you can trust that the math will tell you whether you guessed right or wrong. Okay. You come out with a negative number, it was compression. No big deal. Okay. Good questions. Keep them coming. All right, so let's figure out the horizontal component of AD. Well, it looks like that'd be a 12 or a twelve thirteenths component. Do you see that? What the heck did I just do? I looked at the geometry triangle. So twelve five thirteen. That geometry has to somehow match the force triangle because the force triangle has force AD along this line, AD X along that line, and AD Y along that line. You see. It's a similar triangle to the geometry. So if I wanted to find out how AD and ADX are related, I can look at it the same way that 13 and 12 are related. In other words, AB plus AD to get the horizontal piece, 12 thirteenths equals zero. Okay? Any questions? The key is that we're using geometry to, to make a similar triangle to the force triangle. And really, the force triangle really is just one force that we're breaking up into two directions. Okay. So, AD then must be equal to 13 twelfths of AB. But AB is a negative thing. So remember, it's compression, so negative 12 kips. The math works out nice, and then we get negative 13 kips. <coughs> so AD is 13 kip load compression. I'll go ahead and make a couple of other dotted lines to keep myself straight here. There we go. Question so far? Yes. So when you moved AD, to the other side of the equal sign. Why does it stay positive? Well, it doesn't. I messed up, didn't I? Should have moved to the other, should have attached a negative sign. Negative, negative, positive. So actually, that's tension. Thank you. You're right. So AD is actually pulling this way on point A, whereas AB is actually pushing that way. What should I do next? Probably some forces in the vertical direction, right? So let's try that. Summing forces in the vertical direction. For what? For bot free body diagram A, for that pin A, right? That's what we're focusing on right now. I'd get negative AC 
minus AD1. AC points down, that's opposite the coordinate system. AD has a vertical component that's also negative, so they both get negative sides. Then if I rearrange, AC is negative ADY. Well, let's see. Yeah, I'll just trust the math. It feels like it's going to come out wrong, but we'll find out. AD, to get the Y component, what fraction should I take? What should I use in the geometry to get just the vertical component of AD? So negative what is AD? It's 13 kips. 5 thirteenths. We're trying to make our lives easy, aren't they? So AC is 5 kips negative. AC, 5 kips in compression. That means AC is actually pushing up this way. Let me draw the free body, body diagram the way things are really going, okay? AB is actually pushing like that, AC is actually pushing like that. But I wouldn't do this and then write this. I just do this to give myself a warm, warm, fuzzy feeling that my intuition is happy that everything looks right. Sure, if AD is pulling down like this, I'm going to have to push with AB and AC, aren't I? Hold this in equilibrium. Okay. But don't ever do this unless you want to confuse yourself. Okay? Yes? Uh, real quick, would you mind explaining how you got the 5 thirteenths? I think I have an idea. Oh, you're fine. Draw that triangle again. 13, 12, 5. That's the geometry triangle. Yeah. I want the vertical component of something that's along that line. Yeah. A, A D is simply along that line. Okay. So if I want the vertical component of A D, I just take 5 13 so that. And then for the X component of A D, you got 12 and 13. 12 15. Good question. Anything else? So let's see. Do we get all of our answers written down? I feel like we should have more results at this point. We'd have what? A, B. Oh, we do have. I forgot to put in zero for B, D. We found from our previous free body diagram that B, D is equal to zero, or the force in B, D is zero. Well, this seems to be working out well. Let's just keep marching through the, the truss and see what we find. Which point do you want to take next? I don't really care. Take your pick. You tell me. C or D? C. Okay. <coughs> There's point C. There's force uh, CD. Force CF. Force CE. And what am I missing? AC. Right? Get them all right, CD, CF, CE, yeah. Now, let's see which one of these we know. We know AC. We don't know CD. We don't know CF. We sure don't know CE, do we? Is this something we can solve? No, when you have three unknowns, you can't solve. Sometimes you can solve for one of them. But in this case, that's not true. For example, CF has both a horizontal and vertical component, and so it's going to, whatever equation you're going to write, and say a horizontal direction, CF and CD will appear. Vertical direction, CF and CE will appear. AC is a known, so that's no big deal. But we've got three unknowns and only two equations. What are the two equations? So the force in the X, some force in the Y. The equations of equilibrium. We can't solve C. Well, let's look at D. Three body diagram of point D. What do we got? Uh, BD, which I think we know. Yeah, has no force. Uh, let's see. AD. D over here, I guess. 18 kips. Don't forget to include the external loads. Sometimes you get so focused on the internal loads from all the members, you forget the external loads. Be careful about that. And then DF. I think we could probably solve point D. And then maybe we can solve point C. So let's do that. See what happens. 
Uh, double check myself. I feel like I've forgotten something. Oh, I did. Look at that. I almost forgot CD, didn't I? And guess what? Well, AD is known. Yeah, so we should be able to solve this. DF and CD are, are unknown, but not for long. It looks like this will work. You want to sum forces in the horizontal or vertical direction first? I don't care. Take the horizontal. Horizontal, that'll work. Sum forces horizontal direction. Now, you can say, but you drew this arrow in the wrong direction. I thought arrows always come out from the joint. Only for the members. Okay? We're only assuming tension for the members. If I've got a force that's an externally applied force and it's pushing to the left, I'm going to draw it that way. Okay? So, negative 18 kips, just to get that one out of the way from the very beginning. There we go. Well, that one's taken care of. DF, BD won't appear because those are pure vertical. CD, so minus CD, minus ADX. Okay. And what's the unknown? CD is the unknown, so let's solve for it. CD then must be equal to negative ADX minus 18 kips. So negative AD, how do I get the horizontal component of AD again? Um, that's use the triangle. Correct. So what, what ratio would that be? Uh, Negative 18 minus 13. And we know that AD is 13 kips tension, so negative 13, 12 thirteenths kips minus 18 kips. And 12 and 18 are 30, aren't they? So that's negative 30. So CD is 30 kips. You know what? I'm tired of writing the word kips. Mr. Wallace, you may want to sit back a row. I'm getting over the flu. I don't think I'm infectious, but just in case. You all can sit there if you like. My son coughed in my mouth when I bought him in his car seat. Okay. Okay. It's fine. Okay. You have kids. You're immune, immune to everything, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so 30 kips, and we just determined this is negative. Therefore, that means this is compression. Okay. So now we know the magnitude of the load in CD. So now let's sum forces in the vertical direction. But now instead of me just flying through this, I'm going to ask you to help me out here. Summing forces in the vertical direction. Somebody give me a term. What do we need? Um, so BD is Good. positive. Yes. And then uh, positive AD in the y direction. Good. And then negative DF. That's right. And that's it, right? Yes. Good. Excellent. Which is the unknown? It's DF. So if we write DF equals, we pull it to the other side, BD plus ADY. I'm running out of space, so how can I get just the vertical component of AD? <coughs> what fraction change? Got thirteenths. So now just plug in the numbers. BD is, well, it's zero, isn't it? discovered that. And so we just need 5 thirteenths of, I hope, 13. What is AD? Yeah, 13 in tension. We're making the math really easy for us. So DF has a 5 kip load. Is that tens tension or compression? Did I not write DF on this list? I think I missed DF. What is it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah, What's that? It says DE. It, it says DF. DF. Oh, that's because I put a dotted line under it. Thank you. Yeah, there's no DE, is there? No. Okay, so that's DF. All right, so five kips. I know the fourth in DE. It's zero. <laughs> I would agree. Because <laughs> there is no member there. Compression or tension? Because we've been consistent and always drawn arrows going out from the joint, the free body, 
except of course externally applied loads. We're assuming tension. If we get a positive number, that means we were right and the member is in tension. Okay? So this is a tensile load in member DF. Well, this is working out really well. So let's continue on to point C. Because I think we found, when we drew a free body diagram of point C, that we almost had enough, but not quite. Let's see, how did it go? There was uh, CD. So you're doing the method of joints? Yes, correct. Method of joints. CF, CE, AC, and I think that's everything. Okay. <coughs> I think that's all of the forces. One, two, three, four. Yep. No external loads. We know AC. We know CD. Which joint is that for? You tell me. What do you think? Uh, well, they have to go on the left. Um, for C. Now, how could you tell that a lot easier? Because they all said C. Uh, call them C, don't they? Yeah. All right. So, let's sum forces in the vertical direction this time. Why not? Should I call on you or do you guys want to volunteer now? Uh, positive AC. Positive AC, good. Minus CE, minus, minus CF. Minus all of CF? What's that? Minus all of CF? No, it's CF along uh, only the vertical part. So it would be. What do we call that? X direction. X direction? Y direction. Wow. Y direction. CFY, right? Oh, okay. which one? Yeah. Okay. So what's the unknown? Well, let's see. CF and CE are both unknowns, and look at that, they both appear. So, let's at least put all the unknowns on one side. We'll have CE on one side. We move CF to the other side, how would I get just the vertical component of CF? Uh, it would be 513. It would be <coughs> 5. Or would it be... Uh, it, it would be 513, so that's correct. Okay. Yep. I had to cough so I could speak. <laughs> All right, well, we don't know CE or CF still, so let's try summing forces in the horizontal direction. Somebody else help me out with this one. Positive CD. Positive CD, good. What else? 12, 13 CF. Let me write it this way so you get in the habit of CFX, but you're right. CD was negative CFX, but CFX, you're right, will be 12 thirteenths. Now let's see. Wait a second. CD is what we knew. Why did I solve for CD? Yeah, no big deal. So negative 13 twelfths CD is equal to CF. So let's just plug in CD. Is CD a positive or negative thing? Um, I mean, it's compression. So it's a negative thing, right? But wait a second, didn't I take that into account here? That's the beauty of this system. You don't have to worry about it. If you will always draw your arrows from other members in a tensile direction, then if it's compression, you can just plug in a negative and the math takes care of itself. What do you mean by a tensile direction? A tensile force? Yes. Here, I'll show you. Do I have to put this in tension to get the cap off or compression? If I put it in compression, cap doesn't come off, right? That's what I mean. Does that make sense? So you're saying just always make them go out and, and not go in? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you're saying assume they're always in tension. Always assume they're, they're always, always going out. Correct. Right. Except for that one time when it was going in. But that wasn't from a member. That was an externally applied load. Yeah. That's why I didn't bother changing its sign, because that would be more confusing to me. So did you keep it as positive? No, I simply put it into the equation as it was. So I pointed it in towards the free body of the pin. But you kept it positive. 
18? Well, it was it was actually going in the negative coordinate direction, so I had to plug it into the equation as a negative 18 kips. Okay. I was just consistent with what was given there. Okay. It's just the members where you always assume tension. There's no such thing as tension in a, <coughs> you know, uh, an externally applied load. Okay. <coughs> All right, so negative 13 over 12 times 30. Well, we said this is a, a negative 30 equals CF. So help me out here, guys. What's the, the number? Hopefully it comes out rationally. I'm not sure if it will. I'm getting 32.5 kips. 32 and a half. Thank you. So CF, 32 and a half, and that's tension. That seems like a two and a point. Okay. Any questions about all this? Well, now that we've got CF, we can take it and plug it in up here, right? So let's see. In fact, I guess the thing to do would be to solve for CE. CE would stay on that side, AC would stay on its side, and this would come to the other side. So minus CF 5 thirteenths. And then AC is negative 5. Why? Because it's compression. Minus CF. CF is, oh, here it is, 32 and a half tension times 5 thirteenths. I thought you said CF was in tension. How come you plugged it in as a negative? I didn't. The negative sign came from the equation. Plugged in CF itself as a positive 32.5. All right, so what's the number if you don't mind, guys? <coughs> you guys are so unlucky. If I ever get sick where I can't hold class, it's during break time. I don't know why. It's been that way ever since college for me. I guess my body just realizes now is not the time to be sick. You can't do it. <laughs> we don't have time for luxuries such as illness. <laughs> the same thing happened to me over trick too. Did it? Yeah, yeah. It was only a couple of days then, but I was just like, yeah. Oh, yeah. At least yeah. it wasn't during class. Yep, yeah, that's what I thought. What's negative 5 minus 32.5 times 5 over 13? Anybody have it or do I need to grab What's it? What's like negative 17.5? 17.5, thank you. So CE. Uh, let's Wait, see. I messed up. Okay. Did I? I think so. I yeah, I know. It should add, shouldn't it? You know what? I put this on the wrong line because I had CF here and this was supposed to be CE. So let me move my 32 and a half. I a bunch of uh, parentheses. Make sure. So 17 and a half, okay. but negative, so that's compression. Yeah, yeah, okay, things are going along pretty well. Unfortunately, what I had hoped would happen has not happened yet. We'll see if it does. <coughs> <coughs> All right, let's take, uh, we only got three body diagrams, E and F, left. Let's try E and see what happens. That's the left-hand side. Let's see, here's E. We got uh, CE here, EF here, and a reaction. I call this RE. Why did I draw it upward? Because the ground's pushing on the pin. This is not a force from a member. Okay, so I'm just going to draw it in a positive direction. Now we know the magnitude of CE, as I recall. Summing forces in the vertical direction, it's pretty obvious what the reaction would be equal to. The reaction at pin E is, well, let's see, 17 and a half in compression. That means CE is actually pushing down this way. So RE is pushing upward. So 17 and a half kips is the reaction at E. 
How about EF? Well, if we sum forces in the horizontal direction, we find there are no forces to offset EF, right? And so EF has to be a zero force member. What about point F as our next free body? Well, let's see, there we've got DF. Looks like I'm going to have to move this. Let me put it inside. There we go. CF. Is there an RF? There would be. EF and reaction force at point F. However, notice this is a pin, and therefore there can also be a reaction force in the horizontal as well as vertical directions. Okay. <coughs> 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 Sorry. We know the magnitude of DF. It's 5 tension. I think we know CF. Yep. We know EF. So we should be able to get the reaction forces in the horizontal and vertical directions. RFX and RFY. So let's do that next. Does anybody know what RFX will come out to? Anybody want to take a guess? Not zero. Think about an overall free body diagram. What do you notice? It's going in to the right in the x, it's positive x direction. That's right. And what would its magnitude be? Is it going to be 32.5? <laughs> It's not going to be 32.5. Try again. You're almost there. You don't have to look at the... We're, we're zooming in a lot. Forget this for a second. Is Zoom out. It's going to be 32.5 multiplied by um, to do a 12 month. over 13. Nope. Mm -hmm. Just 18 kips. Well, it might be times 12 over 13. I didn't know you were going to tack that on. It's not 18 kips. Somebody else had their hand up, I thought. Would it be... Negative 30 kips. I think it's just going to be 30, isn't it? I don't think it's going to be negative. We've got 30 kips pushing the whole structure this way. Something's going to have to push back to keep the whole thing from accelerating. You see? So I fully expect RFX to come out to 30. Let's prove it. The summing forces, let's see, I think we've extracted everything from E. Summing forces in the horizontal direction, we will have RFX. Right? Minus EF minus CFX. And that's it. That sum comes out to zero. RFX then would be EF plus CFX. EF is a known. CF, we want the horizontal piece of it. Well, that'd be 12 thirteenths piece. Or the 12 13th piece. I have a quick question. Sure. Sorry. Um, oh, you're fine. Backtracking. How do we know that uh, EF was zero? That remember EF had a zero load? Uh, that was from the free body diagram for E. It's the only force in the horizontal direction, so it had to be zero. Sorry, say that again. There was a free body diagram with E? Yeah. That was the only force in the horizontal direction? It was only zero. Only EF was in the horizontal direction, okay. so it had to be zero. It's a good question. Does that make sense? Can you say that for all the other members? No. Look, look at the free body diagram of E. You see anything that's going to counterbalance EF? No. Me either. That's how I know. Does that make more sense? How does that? Because E is on wheels. Does it make it zero? Is it because it's counteracting the? Because it's all stationary, and if it's going that way, it has to be counteracting something. Because it's all. Like, the sum of the forces on anything has to be zero if it's a static situation, yeah, that's, yeah. including that pin called E. Okay. So we just looked at all the forces there can possibly oh, be on E, and that's it. Because if it's pointing, yeah. I got you. Yeah. Good question. If you guys have questions like that, stop me and ask. Okay. One of the most, there, there's two things in teaching that's a lot of fun. 
want us to watch you guys graduate, get your first job, start a family, all those things. And if you turn me on Facebook, I know most of you probably don't use Facebook, but if you do, then I can at least wish you a happy birthday and watch your family grow. Watch your, your life progress. I enjoy that. The other thing that's fun is to see what just happened there where the light comes on and you say, oh, I get it. I love aha moments for myself too, and I like it when you have them as well. So that's a good thing. So please don't hesitate to ask questions. All right. So now we're oh we were summing forces in the horizontal direction, and somebody did make a point back back to free body diagram E. Somebody did make a point that you can contrast E and F and say, well wait a second, then how come we have any horizontal reaction force on F? Well, because point E is on wheels, the ground cannot push in the horizontal direction on E. The ground can only push in the horizontal direction on F. That's it. Okay? So that's why I didn't draw another force on a uh, free body diagram of pin E. But anyway, back to here. So RFX is EF, which I think we know the magnitude of. Zero. Yeah, zero. Plus CF, 32. <coughs> .5, and I bet 12 thirteenths of 32 and a half is 30, isn't it? Mm -hmm. There we go. So let's sketch that. RFX is, I don't need that triangle anymore, I guess. 30 kips. <coughs> and if we sum forces in the vertical direction, We'll have RFY plus DF uh, plus the vertical component of CF. Okay. The only unknown is RFY. We just figured out RFX from the last sum. So RFY is negative DF minus CFY. But now, let me not write the Y. Let me figure out the component. So CF, Y component would be the 5 thirteenths side of that force triangle. So DF is 5. Now DF is in tension, therefore I plugged in a positive 5. The negative sign just came along for the ride from the equation. Minus CF, 32 and a half, 5 thirteenths. Now if it was 12 thirteenths, it would be uh, 30, right? So 5 twelfths of 30, whatever that number is, 150 over 12. Anyway, so what's the, the number for RFY? Anybody have it? I can tell you what it is, 17 and a half. At least it should be. How did I know that? Because if you look at an overall free body diagram, you notice we only have horizontal forces acting except for this one. What's going to counteract it? By the way, it'll be negative because it's actually pulling down. RFY will counteract it at 17 and a half kips. You see, I assumed that RFY acted upward, and then I got a negative number indicating that I assumed the wrong direction. You see? Any questions about all this? Could you sum moments about E figure RFY? You could. We'll show that that works. Um, there's another thing I would recommend is to always take an overall free body diagram to get the reactions. And that makes your life easier. Sometimes it's really difficult to start at one point and work your way through. Sometimes it's easier to start at other points. Okay? So what we should have done, and I was hoping we'd get stuck, but we didn't in this problem. Some problems you do tend to get stuck in. But I had hoped that we would get to a joint and we couldn't solve it because we didn't have the reactions. It's always good practice to get the reactions first. Go ahead. <coughs> I just got it. Me too. <laughs> no, no. Um, why, did we, why did we keep going after we filled out all the loads for each member? Because knowing the reactions is important even if the problem doesn't ask for it. Okay. Knowing how to do I that. I didn't know if it was like required, even though you know, it was the problem statement. Most of the time, though, you're not very wise to avoid it. It's better just to get the reactions. So what I just said is I did this in a dumb way. I should have gotten reactions from the very beginning. Yeah. How would I do that? I would make an overall free body diagram of the entire system. R, F, Y, R, F, X, R, E, 
what was it, 12 and 18, I think, in the KIPS. Mm -hmm. Now, an overall free body diagram will allow me to calculate well, RFY. If you want to sum moments about E, sure, we can do that. Summing moments about E, counterclockwise positive. What would be the moment arm for RFY? Yeah, 12 times 12. What do you mean 12 times 12? I think it would be 12 times RFY. Mm -hmm. oh. Right? Yeah. We're not assuming we already know RFY. Okay. And notice I've assumed positive coordinate directions for reactions. Okay. Of course, they'll come, they should come out yeah. negative just fine. Like before. I thought we needed to account for the... Oh, we do. Top. We do. I said 12 times 12. I don't think it's 12 times 12. What's the moment arm for this 12 kip force? 10 feet. 10 feet. 10 oh, times yeah, 12. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, you're fine. Don't be sorry. Be fine. That is a positive 10 times 12. Now, notice these are feet and these are kips. You see that? Of course, that's not it. There's one more. There's another force that causes a moment. Can you give me the moment of the last force? And tell me whether it's positive or negative. How about that 18, 18 kip? What's that? The 10 and 18. So 10, I'm sorry, 5 and 18. 5 and 18, there you go. Plus 5. I'll get there. You're fine. <laughs> this should allow us to calculate RFY. As a matter of fact, RFY, if we do the math quickly, these would move to the other side. So negative 120 minus, what's 518? 520 is R. What, 200? No, 100. 100 to 200. 100, I can't even talk. Uh, so 90, mm -hmm. I'm thinking right. All divided by 12. And of course, these are kept feet, these are kept feet, and these are feet, so we'll get kips at the end. Or foot kips, take your pick. And that works out to be 17.5. Negative, Negative 17.5. So we verified that one. What about the reaction in the uh, vertical direction at E? Well, for that, I would simply sum forces in the vertical direction for the entire structure. Right? So the forces in the vertical direction, I'd have RE plus RFY. Notice I'm still going by my free body diagram. I figured out that RFY is a negative thing. I don't care. I'm going to stick with this, and then when the time comes, I'll plug in a negative number for the term. Go ahead. I have two questions. Sure. Uh, why, why does RE not say REY? Uh, because RE has no horizontal component. Okay, okay. Because of the top of support. Good okay. question. What else? And then, um, what does the E mean on the ME? Summing moments about point E. About point E, that's what I thought. Because I'll get a different result by some moments about some other point. And then that arrow with the positive means summing the moment about Take your point hand. E in the positive direction. Take your hand and curl your fingers in the direction of the arrow because notice it's a bent arrow. That's the positive direction. Okay. That's how I define the positive direction. Okay. Good question. What else? Okay. So this sum is zero. So R E, I can make an E, is just the negative of R F Y. And since R F Y is a negative 17.5 kips, then R E is a positive 17.5 kips. In other words, I chose the correct direction here, but I missed the direction there. All right, it's actually pointing in the other direction. Kind of makes sense. How would I get R F X? Any idea? So the equation is missing. Something forces in the horizontal direction is missing, isn't it? So if we do that, we'd have RFX minus 12 minus 18 equals 0. So RFX is equal to 30. Okay. And that verifies the last reaction. Okay. Had we begun with an overall free body diagram, we would have had the ability to work our way up through the truss rather than coming down through it. It doesn't really matter that much. Sometimes it's easier to go one way than the other. In this case, 
it doesn't really matter. For our purposes, it did provide a way to verify after we had stepped through all the minutia of a bunch of different joints that we got it right. <coughs> <coughs> Any questions? <coughs>